one. All right, what's up, people? Coach Willis here. Willis Performance Training, and I'm here with my man, Hunter Nourizad. Hunter, what's up, man? What's up? How are you? I'm doing good. I appreciate you uh, coming on tonight. I know it's, what, 9 o'clock, and I asked you yep. last minute to come on. But, um, you know, Hunter here is one of my athletes. From how, how long How long we been? We've been training? Uh, I've known you for, like, six years now, but I've been training okay. with you five or four or five. Yeah. Yeah, so Hunter, you know, he's he's – He's he's that guy, um, but um, Hunter's kind of going to give us some perspective on what it's like being a, a collegiate athlete playing Division One, the transitions he had to make, and you know some advice we got he 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 might have for uh, some of the younger guys coming in. Um, before I give him over the mic, though, he is a little modest. This is this Mister All Ivy League. Um, you know he's got he's got some accolades in just his second year playing ball. In college, yep. so he's put in some major work and he's got some major results. But you know, Hunter, tell us more about you know where you playing in the high school days. Like, what's up? Uh, so in high school, I went to Walker and I played football like all four years in high school. I was like all in my sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. And then now I play at Cornell, which is like way up north. And uh, I play offensive line, and I didn't even travel my freshman year, so I wasn't even like in the first like 10 spots, but then I kind of just like worked really hard in the off season, like the winter after uh, my first fall. And I'm a, I was a sophomore or I am a sophomore now. And I played every snap of all 10 games that we played. And I got a second team all Ivy. So I was all conference and now I'm here. Well, I told you before in the season that that was going to happen. So I'm, I wasn't even surprised when it did. Um, so you made the transition coming out of Walker High School, uh, I, well, excuse me, the Walker School, the Walker School here in um, here in Marietta. They have other kids who are in your position now. You know, they're they're seniors. We'll get to this whole senior thing getting cut short here in a bit. But you know, there's some kids, there's some football players, some linemen in your position who um, they might be in that process of getting to that level and playing. And there's some who are in who who are trying to create that opportunity for themselves to get to that level. What would you tell them about that transition from high school ball to college ball? So the first thing is that like, if you're going to be at a high level and especially at Walker, or especially in high school, like you're going to be like the best one on the team. You're gonna, probably going to care the most and like people are going to look up to you. But then like right when you get into college, everyone on the team with you was that guy on their team in high school. So like the competition is increased a lot because everyone is used to being like the best player on their squad, but now you have like 80 best players. And so competition's better. You have to be, you have to get bigger. You have to be faster, be stronger. Um, and I mean, this, the game is just way faster and more aggressive than you could ever like imagine in high school. But the, that's definitely the biggest transition, just the, the level of skill and the level of speed that um, that college football is. Major facts. Um, very true. And so what, when coming in, coming out of high school, your last year, going into your freshman year, I mean, what are some things you feel like you would have done differently to, to prepare? Or do you feel like you were the most prepared that you could have been going into that first year and then going into that second year? Well, so going in from my senior year of high school into my freshman year of college, I was working with Coach Willis here. And um, I was definitely like the fastest and best in shape, especially for my size, out of all the freshman offensive linemen that were coming in. But um, if I could do it differently, I probably just would have put in, I mean, because you can always work harder, you know. So looking back, I probably could have worked harder, like focus more on, like my football and my, like what I want to do, probably condition more. But that would have, that would have just taken me like a little more. That would have taken me like a little extra edge it would have given me. But um, I was still like the, one of the best athletes out of the, the offensive line my freshman year. And then after my freshman year, I put in work. I put in a lot of work over winter break with Coach Willis. I came back in the spring and I put in a lot of work with the team. And then last summer, I was working with Coach Willis again, and I was working my working my ass off. And um, I don't think there's anything I could have really done differently going into going into my sophomore year of college because 
my results were what I wanted. So I was happy with that. I was happy working with Coach here. Appreciate appreciate the shot, man. You, you're killing it. Um, how much? What's the size difference from your last year at Walker to where you are now? How much were you weighing when you came out of Walker, and where are you at right now? Well, so I was. So I'm like, I was. I haven't grown. I don't think, but I was like six four my senior year. I think I was like three hundred pounds. And then right now, I think I'm. I haven't weighed myself in a few weeks, but I should be around three fifteen. But it's like a very different. Uh, ways that's like something you have to see is like when I was in high school I weighed 300 pounds but like it was soft I wasn't quick like now I weigh 315 but I'm like way stronger I'm way faster than I was so um, you have to make sure that when that when you're gaining weight or if you're changing your body in any way for a certain sport you have to make sure that like you're actually it's going to be benefiting you rather than disadvantaging you understood Understood. So before you made that commitment to Cornell, obviously you were getting courted by different schools. Um, you had how many schools were talking to you before you committed? Uh, quite a few, probably like 10, 15. So you actually had, I mean, you actually had the experience of getting courted by these schools and getting multiple offers. I mean, what was that process like? How was it? I mean, what, what really, made you decide to choose Cornell? Like what, what factored into that decision? Well, the first thing was that whenever a school came on campus and um, to talk to me or any of the guys that were in my class that were they were recruiting, I had told myself that if they didn't have an engineering program, I would just tell them I wasn't interested like, like in the get go. So I wasn't wasting their time and they weren't wasting my time. So the first thing I was looking for was an engineering program that was really good, like something that I couldn't do on my own without football. So Cornell is a great engineering program. So I was, that was like the first thing off my list. The second thing was that it's like a really beautiful campus. And then the main thing was that when I went on campus and I got to meet the players and the coaches, I was, I could tell that I would really fit in with everyone and the culture of the program there and even the culture of the school, I really liked. So I decided that like, Something I thought about was if I, if they took football away from me, say I got injured or something, I could never play again, would I still be happy? And I decided that I would still be happy there without football. So the, like, it's a great school. I like the atmosphere, the people, and without football, I would still be happy. So that's, that's what led me to chose, choose Cornell. So for an athlete right now in high school who's trying to decide on where they want to go to school, what, what would you tell them as far as what they should look for in their final decision? I think in your final decision, you should definitely make sure that you would be getting along with your teammates. Um, make sure that you, the coaches aren't really as important as the teammates because the coaches are disposable. They'll probably move around and leave. But as long as you get along with the people in the program, then that's like the main things that, that'll ensure that you're gonna be happy there. And then, like I said, you, all the other factors, I think the most important thing is that you should know that you'd be happy there without playing your sport. Like say you're going to a school and if you if you have like an injury and you stop playing football or basketball or whatever and then you're just suddenly unhappy because you don't like it there, you don't like the teachers, the other students and stuff like that, that's just that shouldn't be the right place for you. It makes sense. It makes sense. And then so I just went blank. I forgot my next question. Um mm. So you said we, we talked about the level of competition at you know transitioning from from high school going into college, et cetera, et cetera. How about the difference in the strength and conditioning program versus in high school versus what you get in college? Well, when I was in high school, our strength and conditioning program wasn't really what it is now. Like I noticed that Walker's kind of taking a few extra steps and what they're doing right now. But in college, it's definitely like you have, you're going to have more volume. They're going to push you to like they want you to have big numbers that they reflect on the field. The conditioning is harder. But also at the same time, it's almost easier because you're with people who want to compete with you and want to like everyone's trying to make everyone else better. When I feel like in high school, you might only have a few guys on the team that are trying to push everyone and make everyone like work harder. But in college, you're surrounded by everyone who's trying to, uh, like, 
compete with you and lift more than you or run faster than you. So it kind of pushes you a little more. But the, the work is definitely a lot more. and It's a lot harder in high school. Mm. And what, what type of comments do you have or would you have for someone about what you do athletically in college and then balancing that low with the academic side of school? So most schools, I'm pretty positive, have like services for student athletes. But what I realized is that football kind of like my freshman year, I was prioritizing my schoolwork and I feel like I wasn't I wasn't getting enough sleep and I was wasn't like getting enough sleep for practice and lifts. But then this past year, I decided if I could prioritize my sleep so that I could like have enough rest to make my morning meetings with my coach and then be well rested for practice, that it would help it would kind of carry over into school because I would be more rested. My mental health would be better. So it is hard to balance it, but there's definitely resources to help you balance it. And um, you kind of just get the hang of it. Cause like my freshman year was kind of rough, but then now it's kind of, it's pretty easy being able to balance all those things together. Good, good, good information to know. Good information to know. And as, as an offensive lineman, coming out of high school, going into college, what are two skills you feel like you should be really good at in order to excel at that level, at the next level? I think that one of them is definitely hip flexibility. So being able to stay low and move quickly while you're staying low. And the second one is probably just like being angry and having a really angry mentality and being really aggressive because everything else, like, Footwork you can teach, even like sets, certain techniques you can teach, but the mindset that you have to have to be like in the trenches in college is like, is rough. So I think that's one thing that you need to get in check. And also hip flexibility is just very important to be able to stay low, get, get under someone, get under their pads. So definitely hip flexibility and just mental, mental mindset. Yes, yeah, so, so mindset and hip flexibility? Yeah, this is, I think those those would be the main two things. That's what's up, man. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna hold you up. I just, you know, some sometimes these kids they need to hear from someone who's actually doing it, and you going you've gone through the process of transition, and then you're also dominating at this level too. And you already know what I say. I personally think you probably be the first Walker athlete to get drafted. That's that's yep. that's my opinion. But I'm speaking on facts. I'm telling you, I know it's gonna happen. But that's down the line. We're focusing on one day at a time. So if you had to leave these kids who are trying to get to that level, one piece of advice, what would it be? You just have to work harder than everyone else because everyone's trying to work hard. Everyone's trying to be the best they can be, but you just have to be the one. Like you want to get somewhere, like you want to get to where you're going early. You want to be the last one to leave. And you just have to, you just have to be the hardest worker in every room you're in whether that's in like the classroom or the weight room or the field, wherever you are, you gotta be the hardest worker. So not so much talent, just the one to. Yeah, exactly. All right, and my last, my last bonus question. So right now we're in this whole pandemic going on, this whole, the, the coronavirus um, situation is terrible. So, I mean, we, obviously we're limited on things. How do you, how do you stay sane during times like this, knowing that you can't, you don't have, you know, school is out. You don't have access to um, school facilities and stuff. You know, what what do you what do you do to keep yourself positive? What do you do to keep yourself sane? And what would you tell um, a kid who might have been in his last season, or you know, they can't go to that camp this summer? Um, what do you tell them to stay positive, and what what advice would you give them? I mean, there isn't really. You don't really have an option like if they like they might have taken your season away from you but that doesn't mean that you can't be in the weight room you can't go find a field somewhere and just keep working on it uh doing stuff online like for me personally staying sane it's just working out is one of the only things but also just keeping a positive mindset all times like just kind of find the positive in every situation that you're in and you should be able to keep your head on straight well, well, there you have it, folks. My man Hunter Nurizad. I appreciate you again coming on, boss. Um, you know, we'll be seeing you soon. Um, you know, I'm always updating the app, trying to get you, 
Yeah. Trying to get you, you know, squared away. Uh, but you know, uh, thanks again, bro, for coming on. And uh, any any last words? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. You bet, man. Well, again, thanks to these kids. You know, everybody, these, these kids who look up to you, uh, they're going to appreciate it. So I'll get you everything when it's done. But uh, I'll, I'll talk to you here soon, man. Perfect, perfect. All right, Hunter. Have a good one. You too. Bye.